There is no such thing as electric car. You know what will happen to your electric car when it's minus 45 chill factor, right? It will not even start really, right? Unless you have it in a heated cocoon garage, really, right? It will take about three times more time to charge it really. And as far as the mileage, to use the good American term, instead of kilometrage, well, it will go about half or less than that, really, right? So instead of doing 180 kilometers, you have to recharge it after 50 or 60. Because of the batteries. Uh, absolutely. So everything in cold climate, everything electric dies or semi dies, really, right? So uh, if you want, if you are in Santa Clara County in California, right, that's fine, really, right? But uh, in tough places, um, cold places and extremely hot places, the same thing, really. It's not there, it's not there yet. If I buy an electric car in China, it's 70% coal car, because 70% of all electricity in China is coal. generated from coal. Norway, Manitoba, Quebec, British Columbia, but beyond and besides that, really, all of these cars are mixed cars, really, with a very high share, and globally it's also like about two thirds really now is this fossil fuel. So what we are doing, we're just transferring the problem from one spot to another spot, right? So we have a cleaner city, but we still have a big power plant, one gigawatt power plant burning coal, right? And in Beijing, there's a clean electric car, right? But 500 kilometers west of it, that giant one gigawatt plant burning that coal, really. So uh, it's, the, it's the consideration of the system, right? Energy density means that we will never fly with electricity. And I mean never, period, as simple as that. Never means as long as we will not have electric batteries, which would be delivering electricity the same way kerosene can deliver. So you may think about very good uh, lithium ion 300. We may actually push the lithium ion to 400, 450, 500. Keep that mind in, you know, 500 watts, right? Good old fashioned kerosene, 12,000. 12,000 versus 400, really. We are talking here about three orders of magnitude, really, right? Two and whatever. If we would get the batteries even to 500 watt hours per kilogram, the typical container ship carrying 15 to 20,000 containers would have to carry 100,000 ton of those batteries. 100,000 ton of those batteries, right? I mean, and that's a simple that's calculation. Possible. We see a little calculator takes you about 30 seconds if you know your numbers, right? You know, that's not an easy thing to do. To eat less meat is easy thing to do. To decarbonize container ships on which everything now depends, all the global trade really, not going to happen. Buildings, yes, but we are not even, you know, doing that. Um, then you have these things like, you know, uh, these two major companies in US, uh, Ford and GM, they said, we will not even make cars anymore. We will just make SUVs. This is not a misopportunity. This is a crime against humanity. I always tell people, explain me, please, why do you need a two-ton vehicle to carry a 50 or 70 kilogram person? Really? I mean, what is the reason there? And we brought it on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Until 1985, the animal called SUV wasn't known, really, right? Just we brought it on ourselves, right? Because if you count the SUVs, which everybody is copying now, Paris is full of SUVs, Tokyo is full of SUVs, right? If we would not have unleash SUVs on the planet, we would have saved tens of billions of tons of carbon, right? So we always do something stupid, and then we can try to find a brilliant, technical, innovative solution. Why don't we uh, stop doing these stupid things? Like, you know, why don't we build an insulated building? Why don't we one-ton car instead of two-ton cars, right? Well, at least the progress is that you uh, stop making a hammer. Right? Mm -hmm. A military assault vehicle for personal use, at least they stopped making that, right? Chinese wanted to buy that, but the Communist Party in its wisdom said, no, you shouldn't buy it. The only wise decision of the Communist Party of China in past 20 years, I think, you know, to st not to buy a hammer, right? You know, one billion people need heating, really, and need it very sorely. And about four billion people are demanding air conditioning on demand day and night because it's getting ever warmer, right? Where do we start with cars or air conditioning or, or we start with public transportation or whatever? So that's the problem. So we start sort of, you know, randomly. We, we do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's very uncoordinated and uh, flying is my favorite subject. I know a great deal about planes. I fly too much. Uh, but flying is one thing which is incredible. Uh, so China is getting electric cars. That's a perfect Chinese example, right? Mm -hmm. However, 10 years ago, you could hardly find a Chinese tourist in Rome or London or Paris. 
By 2022, 120 million Chinese tourists are expected in Europe. So they have electric cars, but they all use that kerosene flying, right? To Vancouver alone, there is like five or six Chinese airlines, right? Uh, I talked to a friend from Helsinki, and she said, on our flight from Helsinki, she's Finnish, from Helsinki to Paris, me and my daughter, we were the only Finnish people. The rest of them were Chinese, because there is a hub, direct flight from Beijing to Helsinki, whatever. So Chinese will have all these electric cars, but 120 million of them will fly every year too. So I'm not very impressed, you know, by the fact that Chinese are pushing uh, officially lots of electric cars, right? But at the same time, they are telling our people, oh, enjoy your prosperity, go to Paris for a week early, right? I mean, in US and Canada, we cannot have electric trains as in Japan. Okay, or in China, because there is no population density yes. for that. Right? You know, so, however, between Montreal and Toronto, between Boston and Washington, right? Yeah. Between Los Angeles and San Francisco, there is enough high density links in the US to build them. But even these will never be built really because we invested so heavily into cars. Really. Long range forecasting is always tricky, but long range forecasting of birth rates over the next 20 years, it's easy. We just have to make the right guess about fertility rate, and this is not so difficult. We know that this next generation will not start having five babies, right? So the same is energy transitions, really. We've been transiting to natural gas forever, right? And the transition has been speeded up in US because of these old coal-fired power plants. We closed one in Iowa, which was built in 1924. It had to happen sooner or later, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, natural gas is the fuel of today and future, and. Uh, tomorrow and after tomorrow, and, uh, and there is plenty of it, and uh, the whole planet is one gas ball, fundamentally.